Hi, welcome to the next of our series of mini lectures talking about designing a zoom lens. Um, today we're going to focus on the second of the bullet points here, which is understanding how available devices work that allow the manipulation of light. And the devices we're going to be talking about today that we'll be using through the rest of the course are lenses. And the lenses essentially are these things right here. These are illustrations or schematic representations. And what we're going to find is that as rays of light come off of an object, they will be bent by the lens and we can make them uh, do things to form images as if we know the mathematics and how to do this. But we're going to develop, today's job essentially is to develop the mathematics that allow us to do this. Um, so as I mentioned, lenses are devices to manipulate light. We really have three design parameters of a lens if we want to build a lens. And um, these are the radius of curvature of both surfaces of the lens. And so R1 is the radius of curvature of this circuit surface. We assume for this class that these surfaces are spherical. In other words, the equation for a sphere defines the curvature of the surface. And this curvature is centered at point C1 with radius R1. Uh, the other side over here, let me get a different color. It'd probably be a good idea. Let's go ahead and get a bright green color. Uh, this surface here has curvature R2 with a center point of C2. And it's also a sphere. Let's go ahead and erase all of that. So... The way a lens works is light starts from some point, and the way this is conventionally drawn is that point is over on the left side of the lens, and this is called the object. And rays of light from the object come, hit the surface of the lens with index of refraction in, are bent going through the first surface, are bent going through the second surface, and again cross the optic axis at a point that we call the image point. Um, the distance from the lens to the object is termed SO. The distance from the lens to the image is termed SI. One thing that this diagram doesn't show, but is very much the case for the derivations we're going to be doing here, is that no matter where the ray of light hits the lens, they will start and end at the same point. And so the lens takes all the rays of light that start at one point on the optic axis and they'll all focus down or all meet again on the optic axis at the image point. Now, the derivation of this is somewhat mathematically tedious, and I've created a second mini-lecture if you're interested in going through that derivation that uh, is optional that I'll let you look at. So I'm not going to go through the derivation of how all of this goes here because it's sort of long and detracts from the major points. Uh, but in order to use the math we're going to be talking about in order to use the equations in geometrical optics. The equations are very, very simple, but it's very important that you follow sign conventions, that the distances R1 and R2, um, SO and SI have sign conventions attached to them. And it's very important that you remember these because most of the wrong answers you'll get are by using the wrong signs. And this is shown here. The curvature C is positive if it's on the right side of the lens and negative if it's on the left side of the lens. And so R sub n, so R sub 1, let's say n is 1, is positive since C sub 1 is on the positive side, the right side of the lens over here. Um, R2 happens to be a negative number because C2 is on the negative side of the lens over to the left. The image distance, SI, is positive if the image is on the right side of the lens but the image distance is negative if the image is on the left side of the lens. To the opposite, our objects, SO, that distance is positive in this case because our object is to the, le the left side of the lens. It's possible to have an object over on the right side of the lens, but in that case, the object distance, SO, would be negative. So these sign conventions are something you should go back. They're in the book, but they can be a little hard to find. And the answers can be wrong if you don't do this. But if we go through and use these sign conventions for an index of refraction, a lens with index of refraction in, um, the equation that describes the relationship between the image and the object distance and the design parameters of the lens, which remember the index of refraction and the curvatures of the surfaces R1 and R2, is this equation right here. And I won't read that because that's in your book. 
but for a thin lens, this equation right here describes for an object at distance SO where the image is. And notice that these numbers can be negative or positive. The image and object can be on either side of the lens. Curvatures R1 and R2 can be negative or positive, and this equation still holds. It holds for cases beyond what I've illustrated here, and we'll talk about different types of lenses in a little while. However, in deriving this equation, and again, there's a second mini lecture you can watch that does derive this. In deriving this equation, I've had to apply Snell's law twice to this surface, and I've made the following approximation, which is called the praxial approximation. And that approximation is that theta is equal to sine of theta is equal to tangent of theta. And if you plot theta in the blue, sine of theta in the green, and tangent of theta in the red on this diagram right here, you'll see that at small angles for that input angle, 10, 15, 20 degrees, there's not much variation between theta, sine of theta, and tangent of theta. Um, but as I get out to larger and larger angles, this approximation gets worse and worse and worse. So that this formula is only good if the angles in the optical system are small. And that's important to remember. Um, and there'll be more about that in the other mini lecture about what you do if that's not the case. And we'll cover that in the second half of the course. Now, once we do this, and we have this equation right here for how the design parameters in R1 and R2 relate to the image and object distances, SO and SI, what we do is we set SO equal to infinity. We assume instead of having an object right here, this thing's all the way out at infinity. So the rays of light that come from it are perfectly parallel. In that case, SO goes to zero, or excuse me, SO goes to infinity, so that one over SO goes to zero. Um, at that point, the image distance is called the focal length of the lens. Parallel rays coming in, cross at the focal distance F, and the focal length of the lens, which is a critical design parameter, the one thing that's more important than anything else when you look up lenses, is given by this equation right here. But this picture is really only valid for single thin lenses. Another thing to note is that if I flip the lens over or the rays come from the other side, the focal lengths for ideal thin lenses are the same. Um, for thick lenses, which is a lens uh, large enough to change the equations, in other words, the thickness here gets, gets large, these equations are no longer good. It becomes more difficult to measure um, where the focal length is for a very thick lens. And so this picture is really valid for an ideal single thin lens. And later on in the semester, of course, we'll cover thick lenses in ways to characterize those types of lenses.